I was standing in front of the audience and I just had a brilliant lesson. It was the end of a day course that I'd been on and I'd been selected to sing in the concert because I was singing really well. And I stood in front of the audience and I really wanted to prove to them that I could sing, that I was a good singer. Hi, I'm Hattie Volker from Find Your True Voice, and you're listening to the Courageous Performer podcast, a podcast designed to help you feel comfortable and confident in front of any audience. And this episode is all about my story and my relationship with stage fright and anxiety. So there I was standing in front of an audience, and I'd been there many times before. So what happened? The same thing that always happened. I, my knees started to knock. I tried to introduce the pianist and I I called him by the wrong name. And the technique that I had nailed just an hour beforehand disappeared. The audience became fuzzy and my nerves kicked in. Yet again, I was back to singing badly in front of an audience because of my nerves. At that point, I was convinced that if I learnt how to nail my vocal technique, then everything else would fit into place, that suddenly my nerves would disappear because I'd be able to stand in front of the audience and know that I was going to do a good job, and therefore I wouldn't have to be nervous. All I had to do was nail my vocal technique. But what I discovered was, no matter how much progress I made in my lessons, when I stood up in front of the audience, I went back to the old habits, the nerves kicked in, my brain went to mush, I would forget words, I'd become tense, and everything would feel so much more complicated. The reason I'm telling you this is that I have not always been the confident person you hear and see before you. I faked it for a long time. I pretended I was confident. Nobody I met would have said that I was not confident, but I felt like a fraud because I was just faking it. I was pretending I was confident. And it was actually this really brittle confidence. And that really affected my voice in terms of my singing. In fact, it also affected my voice as a barrister. When I was training to be a barrister, I found that when I started doing the advocacy, my voice suddenly went really high and shaky. I managed to get over that. I managed to be able to talk in court sounding really confident. Never feeling confident, but sounding confident. However, with singing, the technique I needed for my voice was so much more um, complicated and fragile that all the tension I was holding in my body and my head was showing up in my vocal technique. So although I would unpick my bad habits in my lessons, when I got in front of an audience, I would go straight back to them because they were all caused by tension. And I remember about 18 months before this time I was standing in front of an audience, one of my friends, one of my coaching friends, because I was training to be the coach I am now in those days, so this must be about 10 years ago, um, she was coaching me around my singing and around going on a, on a much bigger course. She suddenly said to me, it doesn't sound like you actually enjoy singing because the way I talked about singing, I talked about it like it was this battle. Performing became this battle for me and I was determined to win it. What I didn't realise was that I was actually in a battle with myself because I had chronically low self-esteem. I, or rather I had brittle self-esteem. I had the sort of self-esteem where at one point I thought I was brilliant and everything was marvelous. And at another point, I just thought I was terrible and everything was awful. Um, I spent more time thinking I was awful than thinking I was brilliant because I was longing for somebody to tell me whether I was terrible or brilliant. Someone to define whether I was good enough Because in myself, I didn't feel like I could tell if I was good enough or not. And that really affected every area of my life, particularly my performing. So when I stood up, I had all of this doubt that I was trying to hide from my audience. What changed? What changed was my relationship with myself. Because it's really hard to put yourself out and perform with real freedom if you don't like yourself. 
or you don't think you are good enough. And that good enough can be very specific. So I don't think I'm good enough at doing this, although I know I'm really good at my job. I'm not good enough when it comes to this particular aspect, or it can be across the board. For me, it was pretty much across the board. I didn't feel good enough. There were places I felt good enough. And then I would lean into being arrogant because I was like, yeah, I'm definitely good enough at this. I've got to prove this to myself because the underlying feeling was that I was not good enough. So I said, what changed? And what changed was how I felt about myself and my standard of good enough, because the standard I was setting myself for good enough was way higher than I was setting for anybody else in my life. In fact, if I met my standard for good enough, I would simply raise it. You know, if I felt I did a good job, then I would start to pick it apart and go, well, I didn't do this well, and I didn't do that well, and I didn't do this well. And going back to that moment in front of the audience, I started to notice my knees knocking and thinking everyone's going to see that. Please, knees, stop knocking. Sheet, stop shaking. I need to push my lips forward. I need to focus on my technique. And it felt more and more desperate. There was no forgiveness for me in my life. I either got things right or I got things wrong. And most of the time, by my assessment, I got things wrong. They were not good enough. I was the worst bully in my own life. And I thought I needed to be that bully because I thought it was really important that I held myself to account, that I had these high standards. I kept striving to be better and better and better, that if I wasn't harsh on myself, I would slip back, that if only I could perfect my vocal technique, remember all my words, I would be fine and everything would fit into place. What I didn't realise was this technique for making myself be better, this harshness, this bullying, was what was causing my technique to be bad, was what was causing me to forget my words, was what was causing the nerves. Once I changed that, once I changed the way I treated myself, and I did what to me at the time was the scariest thing I could possibly do, which was take the pressure off, everything started to relax and my nerves started to dissipate and my technique started to improve and my ability to learn started to improve because I was even harsh on myself in lessons. There was no space in the practice room for me to be not good enough. If I didn't nail, thing in, nail things by my piano, then I would really berate myself. It's never going to happen. I'm just not good enough all oh, there's that tension. It had to go really well in my practice for me to actually practice, as opposed to me going, oh, that's really interesting. I find it really hard to do that. I was like, oh, crikey, I still can't do that. It's the same in lessons. I would be embarrassed to get things wrong in my lessons. I would be embarrassed about making mistakes. And that meant that I became very brittle and created this tension because I didn't want to make any mistakes. I wanted to seem good enough so that maybe I would believe that I was good enough. What I brought into my life when I started becoming a life coach and coaching singers and performers and public speakers was I brought in an acceptance of my own humanity. This idea that it is okay to make mistakes. Not only is it okay, actually that's where you do the learning. You do the learning when you make mistakes. So I went to a singing lesson recently and I was singing appallingly. And in the old days, I would have said, I just need to give up. There's no point in me carrying on singing. I should give up now. I'm just not good enough. In this lesson, because of the way I treat myself now, instead of thinking it's important I give up, I was thinking, Wow, this is really exacerbated and made heightened all the things I do badly. So then it became really obvious the things that I was doing badly. It was like, oh, look, my jaw is jutting forwards. I can see it now because it's so extreme. 
oh look, there's loads of tension in my tongue. I can feel it now because it's so extreme. I learned more in that lesson where I was singing horrendously than I'd probably learned in the previous five lessons. It's by making mistakes and forgiving ourselves and going, what can I learn from that? That you make progress. People don't learn by doing it right all the time. You learn by doing it wrong and going, oh, how can I do that better? And you don't have to beat yourself up to do that. Because the one thing that has really transformed my life is realizing that when I'm not hard on myself, I still want to do a good job. I don't need to be hard on myself to improve. I want to do a good job. Even when I'm going, oh, I made a mistake. That's okay. I still don't want to make the mistake again. I still want to improve. And it's easier for me to improve when I'm kind to myself. Because then I don't bring this tension and go back to my old habits and bring in my old protective mechanisms for keeping myself safe. Instead, I just focus on that one thing I want to improve. So I don't have to reinvent the wheel every time I make a mistake because I don't ping back to my old habits of all that tension. Now, I still get nerves. I still get nervous. There are times where I stand up in front of a particular audience and I'm like, I really want to do a good job. And that's always my red flag. And in those moments, I now have techniques that I tap into that can bring me down and help me relax. So I'm now perfectly comfortable doing a Facebook Live or a YouTube video. I'm perfectly comfortable running my own workshops, but put me in somebody else's workshop, I'd probably get nerves. So then I apply those techniques and I'm kind to myself. And then I learn how to react in those situations. If there's one thing I'd like you to take away from this episode... It's that it's possible to change. How do you react when you perform? Whatever your performance is, whether it's public speaking, whether it's um, doing Instagram videos, whether it's singing or acting. You can change how you respond. It's not part of who you are. It's part of a pattern you have developed to try and keep yourself safe. And you can change that pattern to a pattern that serves you better. I'm Hattie Volker from Find Your True Voice. And if you'd like to work on changing your patterns, please do get in contact. You can reach me at hattie at findyourtruevoice.co.uk. That's H-A-T-T-I-E at findyourtruevoice.co.uk. Tell me what's going on for you and let's see if we can find a solution. You've been listening to the Courageous Performer podcast. Thank you very much. I will see you next time.